Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see you here. It's a little bit wet outside, isn't it? Um, might scupper our chances to sing outside after the service. See, see how the weather is. It might, be, it might have cleared up a little bit. Um, but either way, it's lovely to see you here. And um, today we're going to be sharing uh, communion, sharing the bread and wine, and we'll be uh, thinking a bit more about relations as we go through that. And I hope that you're enjoying that as we, as we go through. And um, we'll be praising God together. So why don't we begin with, uh, with a psalm. And uh, we'll have Psalm 131 in the Bible. Psalm 131, which is page 65. And what you find, I'm just going to go and get a service sheet. <laughs> Psalm uh, 131, page 65. And what do we stand? And uh, we'll say this all together, sort of our um, opening hymn, if you like. And Psalm 131, so we say together. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters. Or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quietened myself. I am like a wean child with its mother. Like a wean child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please do be seated. It's a lovely psalm, um, this one. Just a short psalm, three, three short verses, but I think it's, it's a good to remember, isn't it, that you know, when there are times um, when we don't understand what's going on, there are times when we don't understand what's going on in our own lives or in the world, um, that you know, we can just be like a child with its, with its mother. And you, know, you think of a child in its in its mother's arms, just you know, calm and content. And that's, that's like how it is with, with us and, and God, you know, that we don't have to uh, know all of the answers, but that we can trust, trust in God to have the answers, and we ourselves can, um, uh, can just put our hope in him, and knowing that he is the one who holds us and has our good uh, in his hands. Well, let's turn to our service sheets and, uh, and we'll begin with our um, prayer of preparation, our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And as we go through Galatians, we'll be thinking about the law. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at um, later on today. And this is a summary of what the law uh, actually says. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And love your neighbour as yourself. So um, this is worth having in mind, just bearing that in mind as we come to think about uh, what Paul says about keeping, uh, keeping the law. And so we'll pray for, uh, for our Queen and our government uh, at this time. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, 
righteousness and peace to the honour and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have our reading now from Galatians, and Ron is going to bring us our reading. Uh, That's from uh, Galatians chapter 3. So I'll invite Ron to uh, to come up and to to read for us. Can I come up this way? In, in just a moment's time. But if you'd uh, turn back to your service sheets um, just for the, uh, the creed, we'll say the Nicene Creed together as we declare our, our faith and belief in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, do turn back to that passage in, the, in Galatians, page 1169, if you're using the Church Bibles, Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. And so, uh, once again today, we're thinking about what the Christian life is all about. What is the Christian life all about? Is it all about keeping the rules? Is it all about keeping the rules? Now that's something which if you went and asked people, um, not that I've done a survey, but I expect if you asked the average person on the street, what is Christianity all about? I'd expect a lot of people would say, well, it's about the Ten Commandments, it's about keeping the rules. Is that what it's all about? Or perhaps do we, do we live as if that's what it's all about? And that's maybe a, a question which is a little bit closer to home. Do we actually live as if uh, Christianity is all about keeping the rules? And we'll be thinking about this as we go through. What is it about? What is the Christian life all about? So just to put this passage into context, um, as you, um, I'm sure you'll recall being here the last, uh, last few weeks, but the, the, the church in Galatia was being uh, thrown into confusion by these um, Judaizers, we might call them, people who were teaching falsely, who wanted the church in Galatia to obey the entire law of Moses. So they were saying, it's not enough just to believe in Jesus, that you need to keep the law of Moses as well. And so they were asking the Gentile believers to keep the law of Moses as well as um, the Jewish believers. And we presume from this passage, I think, that they were making a big thing about being children of Abraham. They said, well, we're the, we're the children of Abraham. We, um, we're descendants of him. So, you know, we are the, the chosen people. Abraham is our father. And, um, and so that's why Paul responds in the way that he does. And he starts out with some very, very strong words, doesn't he? You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Which I think betrays the, the strength of Paul's, Paul's feeling about this. This is how important it was you know, that, that, that he needed to use um, language like this. You know, sometimes people say it's, it's a sin to get angry. And um, you know, most of the time when we're angry, it is wrong, um, very often. But sometimes it's right. And this is what Paul was, was doing. This is when he's, it's right sometimes to use strong words and strong language. He says, uh, before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. So he, he's talking about, you know, in the, at the end of the last week's passage, we looked at how... Um, he says, if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So remember, he said, Christ's death. You need Jesus. You need, uh, you need Jesus to have died for your sins. I said, we talk back to you. You know, you saw it. And then he says, look, just tell me one thing. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by believing what you heard? So there's, he steps up this, this contrast, which we're going to come back to again and again, all the way through, which is the contrast between the, um, the spirit and faith and simply what he calls works of the law. You know, just doing what the law requires. And he says right from the beginning, he said the spirit came by, uh, by belief. So for example... This is what he says a bit later 
in, a, in 1 Thessalonians. You might remember this from when we looked at 1 Thessalonians in church um, not so long ago. It was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 says, Because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. So when the apostles preached the gospel, it came with the Holy Spirit, it came with power. And we know from the New Testament times, it was often accompanied by sort of miraculous um, demonstrations of God's power. And that's something that he, he, he mentions actually in, uh, in verse 5. Uh, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you? So uh, there's this contrast here, saying what's most, what is effective? You know, uh, do you see the, the, the amazing things that God does through, um, through the spirit or through the works of the law, through, uh, through keeping the law? And that's what he goes on to say. He says, um, uh, have you experienced so much in vain? Again, he says, uh, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by works of the law or by believing what you heard? So that the spirit is, is greater than ourselves. The Holy Spirit can do what we can't do. The Holy Spirit can do what is not limited by, by human strength. So when we rely on the Holy Spirit... We're not limited to what human beings can do alone. We're not reliant on our own strength. But when we rely on the law, this is what he says, we rely on our, our flesh. That's the word that he uses, our, ourselves. We rely on our own strength. And he says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's a quote taken from... Um, Genesis. Abraham believed God. So he says, your father Abraham, think about your father Abraham. The people presumably who were saying, oh our father is, is Abraham. Think about him. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That was how it worked all the way back, as far back in, in the Bible as Abraham. So that, that was, you know, Abraham was the father of the Israelites. And, and, and Paul says that that was always God's plan for the people who to be justified by faith, by belief in God, by the Holy Spirit. He says, understand, those who have faith are children of Abraham. If you're um, a Christian today, if you believe in, and trust in the Lord Jesus for salvation, you are a child of Abraham. That's, um, that's the amazing thing, isn't it? That we're all incorporated into God's family by faith, not by, by physical uh, descent. And, and, and so Paul goes on, he says, look, um, God's plan was always to do that as well, to bless all nations through, uh, through Abraham. And this is why he quotes this, this uh, quote again from Genesis, all nations will be blessed through you. And so he says, it, it, God always had that plan, through Abraham and through Abraham's line to bless all peoples. Not, he wasn't creating a, a, a sort of nation, a physical nation, but a, a spiritual nation, a nation who would belong to him by faith. And you know, we thought a couple of weeks ago about how it is Christ who unites us, regardless of whether we're Jew or Gentile or slave or free, male or female, or whichever nation we may be from, whatever. Every distinction... Is, is nothing in Christ, that we are brought together uh, in Christ. And that's, that's been God's plan from day one. So what's the problem with the law? What's the problem with keeping the law? And that's the question that he, he moves on to, to finishing with. He says this, All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. Uh, as it's written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. And the, the, the operative word there, everything written in the book of the law. And that's why at the start of the service, we, we, when we heard the summary of the law, you remember what the, the summary of the law says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. 
Now, which one of us could say with our hand on our heart that we do those things even, you know, 10% of the time? The emphasis is on all, you know, because we can't do that. That we don't even, we don't even do that a, a small amount of the time, let alone all the time. And Paul says, if you try to keep the law and be justified by keeping the law like that, then you will never be justified. Because all the law does is accuse us. Then we can't do it, all, every law, all the time. This is what um, James says. Uh, here we go. James chapter 2, verse 10 says this. Whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. So if you try to be justified by obeying the law, but you slip up even in just one thing, you failed. And what Paul is saying, of course, is that we're not even like that. You know, we can't even keep most of it. So he says we must rely on faith. Uh, by faith to be righteous. This is why he quotes here, the righteous will live by faith. Again, he says, right back in the Old Testament, this is how God wanted it to be, for us to live by faith, not by um, keeping the law. It is to live by faith. So the problem is that the law is uh, really a code for relying on our own strength, relying on our own efforts to obey. That's the problem with the law, that we uh, rely on ourselves. And Paul says, no, you can't do that. It has to be by faith. It has to be by the Holy Spirit. He's saying that anyone who relies on the law is under God's curse, because the law accuses us. But the good thing is that Christ redeemed us. This is in verse 30. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. He took upon himself that curse of our sinfulness. So when Jesus died on the cross, the curse that was that was mine and the curse that was yours was taken upon himself. Because we can't keep the law. It accuses us. It accuses us of all of the times when we haven't loved God and haven't loved our neighbour. But Jesus took that, that accusation, took that curse on himself, on the cross, and redeemed us so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So that by faith we might come into God's promises and we might inherit the blessings which can only be ours by faith. So we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been given the Holy Spirit. So let's just, as we come to to a a close here, let's think about what that means for us. Now I'd just like you to imagine something with me, okay? Imagine that you want to go to London and you're going to travel by train and imagine you get down to the station there and you're on the platform and there there are two trains there, your left hand hand side, your right hand side and um, they're both the same, same number of carriages, the same, same trains, Everything's the same, except on one train the engine's broken. It's not working. The other train, the engine is working. Okay, now which one do you choose? Well, you might think, well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? But, but what Paul is saying is that when we rely on the law, it's like choosing the broken train. Because he says, when we... When we um, uh, the engine's not working, you'd have to push it yourself, wouldn't you? And believe you me, I mean, I don't think any of us would get anywhere if we had to push a train by ourselves. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to move it an inch. And that's what Paul, say, Paul says, that relying on the law is like. You know, there's no power there. We have to rely on ourselves and our own strength, but we can't do it. That's, that's what relying on the law is like, because we're relying on ourselves, and we don't have the strength to do what God requires. But in the other train, on the other side of the platform, the one with the engine working, if you get in that train, you know, your, it's not your effort that gets you to London, 
It's the engine of the train that gets you to, to your destination. So it is with the Holy Spirit. But when we recognise that we don't have the power and the strength to do things under our own, our own steam, our own strength, then we can rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we can be assured that we will reach our destination. But it's not because of us. But it's because of the Holy Spirit working in us. And we can focus on loving God and loving others. Because we know that we're not doing it under our own strength, but under God's. And we can pray to him. He can help us. And we can, we can do more than what we, can, what we have the strength to do ourselves. Now the question that I'd just like you to, to think about as we finish is this. Um, you know, which one are you in? If you like, which train are you in? Are you trying to push it by yourself? Or are you relying on the Holy Spirit? And I think it's a good question to ask because, you know, in the Christian life, as, as happened in the Galatians, it's possible to start out in one and then transfer to the other halfway through. And it's very common, I think, unfortunately, in the Christian life to start out, you know, and be ready to serve God, wanting, you know, to do things by the power of the Holy Spirit, and then kind of get bogged down by our own limitations, get bogged down by trying to obey the law, and not actually relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. So which, which train are you in? What are you trying to do? That's just a little question that I'd like to leave you with as we come come to a close. Let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through Jesus we are redeemed from the curse of the law. And we thank you that uh, you have given us the, the promised Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus. And we pray that you would help us to be people who rely on your strength through the Spirit and not on our own efforts, not on the works of the law, but to rely on your strength working in us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's um, continue on in our prayers. And um, once again, I brought the um, little prayer sheet today, and I'll read out um, the Pray Guys little prayer that is included at the start. We're continuing to look at this verse, growing the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So let's, uh, let's pray. Loving Lord, help us never to be content with our stock of knowledge of you, but always to desire to know you better. We pray that you will continue to add to our storeroom of knowledge all that we need to live more faithful and serviceable lives. And so, Heavenly Father, we do um, give you thanks um, that uh, you do give us grace and knowledge. And we pray that we would grow in uh, wherever we are, Lord. Please move us on. Keep us moving. We do give you thanks today for, uh, for many churches across the country. Uh, and uh, we do pray uh, for those, uh, as it says in the prayer diary, those ministering in, in working class parishes, knowing, Lord, that this is um, often... Um, many churches uh, often neglect minist uh, ministry um, to, to various groups of people. So we do pray, Heavenly Father, that um, churches up and down the land would seek to be genuinely um, inclusive of people from every part of society and uh, offer that call of the Lord Jesus Christ to each one. And we do give you thanks, Lord, for those in our area who are doing really good work. We continue to pray, especially for... Um, Clive in the Fridays team, and uh, just give you thanks, Lord, for the contacts that they have, and uh, pray, Lord, for your blessing and your Holy Spirit to be at work uh, in their lives. And uh, we pray, Lord, for the, the youth group this evening. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for, for Ignite and for um, Rachel, for Hannah, um, for T, and um, uh, those who are uh, leading the group, and we just give you um, thanks for the, the young people as well. And pray that you would bless each one of them, especially in these uh, days when it is difficult to be a Christian at school and college 
um, wherever uh, it may be. It's a very, uh, can be a very hostile world. And we pray that our young people uh, would find encouragement and fellowship with um, other people of the same age and just be encouraged to continue to serve you wherever they are. And uh, we especially pray, Lord, for those who are taking exams um, today or uh, at the moment. We pray for um, Danielle, who, who has an exam as we're speaking. Um, just pray for your, um, your blessing upon her, for calm and peace and, and the, for the technology to work. We pray for Daniel, who is um, going through an exam time at the moment. And uh, we pray for others, Lord, um, uh, other students and, um, and pupils who are having um, times at the moment of, of assessment. And just pray for your peace and your help for them. And uh, we do give you thanks, Lord, that um, you are with us at every stage. And pray for your blessing upon uh, each one of them. And finally, we do pray for, for those who uh, need our, our prayers, particularly uh, today. And we do uh, continue to remember Wally and Rose. And uh, also we pray for John and Claire. And we do lift them up before you, Lord, and ask that uh, you would bring peace and love and healing um, in every, uh, every one of those situations. Let's take a moment of quiet. If you want to bring any prayers before the Lord, either quietly or, or out loud. And so we do just lift up all these to you, Lord. You know every situation. And we thank you that you are a God of compassion as well as a God of wisdom and a God of power. And we pray, Lord, for your love to surround each one and each situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you uh, turn back to your, uh, your service sheets, and uh, as we begin the communion part of our service, we will um, confess our sins to the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the Scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us, and receive this pledge of his love. Let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. You then, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins, and the wickedness we have committed, time after time, by thought, word and deed, against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger, and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And in this next prayer, the prayer of humble access, we remember as we were looking at um, in Galatians today that uh, we don't presume trusting in our own righteousness, but we come to receive uh, the righteousness of Christ through the mercy of God. Let's pray together. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So, once more, just to remind you that... Um, uh, I'll bring round the bread and the, the wine uh, to you at your, your seats. Um, Steph has got the, the hand jewel there, so when she's done me, um, if you'd like some, just pop your hand up. And um, uh, we'll retain the cup as well, and we'll drink that together um, at the end. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And on the back page we'll pray together the prayer after communion. <laughs> Lord and Heavenly Father, 
we offer you, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your Church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice. Fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, um, again, not a huge amount in the way of, uh, of notices. Uh, but just to say that um, this Sunday, just a little reminder, it is the APCM Sunday, so um, please don't come to St Mark's, um, but it's a joint service down at St John's at 9 o'clock, and it will be followed by the uh, APCM. I know that I think most people, when they hear the words APCM, the annual church meeting, is to sort of roll eyes and think, oh, you know, but, but actually it's a lovely way of just you know, giving thanks to God for the way that he's kept us and looked after us in the last year. I think particularly this last year has been, you know, it's good to do that, isn't it? Um, and um, just to look forward and, and pray for what's happening in the, in the coming year. Um, and, uh, you know, um, the, the administrative side of things is important when it comes to church life, isn't it? And it's, it's a spiritual thing uh, as well. So you know, do, um, do, do go um, on Sunday. Also, it's a coffee morning. Um, so, well, <laughs> pray for coffee morning because it's, it's outside, isn't it? So, um, yes, it will be 9.30 on Saturday, God willing. The weather will have improved a bit. Um, so, um, yeah. Now, is it, is it still raining, I wonder? I wonder whether we might be able to pop out and do a quick song afterwards. It's a bit doubtful. A bit doubtful, yeah. Shall we take a vote? What, what do you think? Give it a go or should we give it a miss this week? Oh, sorry? Give it a go. Okay, give it a go. Well, Sheila wants to give it a go. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what, then. Any, if, anyone, if anyone wants to sing a quick song, in, you know, even if it's raining a little bit, then we'll, we'll do that briefly um, afterwards. Uh, but maybe just quickly this week. Okay. Um, it's not raining. Oh, hooray. There we go. We'll dodge the rain. Um, so, um, I think that's everything then. Any birthdays? I don't think there's any birthdays in the notice sheet this week. No, oh no, no, no. So I don't think there is anyone. So um, there we go. Um, we'll see you. See you soon, everyone. Let's finish with. Uh, let's finish with the grace, shall we? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Um.